This conference will now be recorded. Hey everyone, it's Jody with Wellspring Solutions. Hope that you are feeling well and in good spirits today and thank you for joining me. We're gonna be talking about bathing tips when you are caring for someone who has dementia. And bathing can be one of the most challenging areas of dementia care. So we're gonna be talking about why that is and then some tips to just help you along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. So why is bathing one of the most challenging areas of dementia care? Well, it could be that the person simply does not understand you know, the whys of bathing. They might not have the patience for personal hygiene practices or recognize the need you know, in their memory loss and confusion. They might feel as though they just had a bath earlier in that day. So they just really might not understand the whys of bathing. Bathing is also physically invasive. Um, it involves taking off one's clothes, adjusting to water and air temperature pressures and changes, getting into a tub or a shower and having other people assist them, which can you know, make you feel vulnerable and it can feel like an invasion of privacy. The person might feel fearful, whether it's fear of slipping or falling, um, the water, the sounds of the water, the water itself, um, it just feeling of uh, fearing discomfort, uh, being cold. And bathing can simply just be an overwhelming exercise due to all the steps um, and, and the products that are involved. So whether or not you're able to determine a specific reason for the person's resistance, it could be any or all of these factors that lead to resistance, um, you can try to make bathing more comfortable. And when we go back to the basics of communication I've talked about in previous videos, your words and your body language, your tone, your presence, your treatment are all gonna be what you wanna keep in mind because we want to make sure we promote dignity, positivity, and safety during bath time. You also want to know uh, the person you're assisting's preferences. Do they prefer a bath or a shower? Um, do they have a certain time of day that's better? Are there certain scents um, and aromas that have always um, been enjoyed? If you think about it, you know, you want to work their preferences into a routine and set and maintain this practice. And if someone you know, showered in the morning and that was their um, regular practice and then they would get dressed, if you were to offer a shower or a bath in the afternoon or the evening time, again, that just might add to their confusion because they've always showered first and then got dressed. So if they were dressed for the day and someone was telling them it was time for a bath or shower, that just does not seem right and you might get resistance. So a predictable routine can help reduce just overall anxiety and make them more likely to bathe without resistance. Addressing their comfort needs is very important. Um, if you want cooperation and an enjoyable time for someone to be in the bath or shower, is the setting too noisy? You know, do they have to use the restroom first? Are they tired, hungry, thirsty? So if they're already experiencing distress, it is definitely not a good time to be talking about a bath or a shower. And as we've talked about communication tips in the past, arguing and trying to convince someone with dementia of the need for a bath, um, it's just gonna get you both more frustrated. So if you are supportive and patient, um, if the person verbalizes any type of um, reasons why they might not want to be taking a bath and if they're experiencing any distress, listen to your loved one's objections. And many people with dementia have difficulty expressing their concerns and emotions, so be sure to use empathy, try to understand their perspective, offer reassurance, and setting your tone um, in your words, your tone of voice and you know listening is going to help to address their comfort. It all ties in together. And trying to set the tone for a relaxing experience. You don't want to rush the person. You know, your voice, um, maybe their favorite music, the lighting, 
um, a favorite scent, as I mentioned earlier, maybe sipping a favorite drink. All of those can hopefully make the, um, the bath more of an enjoyable experience. And sometimes even just the words bath or shower um, might cause resistance for someone with dementia. So maybe you could use another phrase. Um, you know, it might feel good if you soak in warm water. Let's go do that now. Um, so just keep trying different um, strategies and hopefully you will find one uh, that you can just make a routine. So some more tips to go over before the bath is to think about the safety. Uh, factors, you know, minimizing risk by using a handheld shower head, uh, shower bench, grab bars, non-skid bath mats, all of those things that could help uh, prevent a fall. And you definitely want to look at a handheld shower as well instead of a regular one so you can control when and where the water touches the person. Of course, you want to mind the temperature of the room and water for comfort. And to gather all the supplies ahead of time, be prepared between the towels, the soap, the shampoo, the clothes that the person will put on after bathing. And if there is just um, difficulty with some of these products, you might want to look at alternatives, a sponge bath um, or using products like a no rinse or dry cleansers, shampoos, they may be good alternatives. Because for some, um, the bath is just going to be such a distressful time and um, you really don't need to have someone in a bath or shower on a daily basis. A, a, um, a sponge bath can definitely do the trick. So tips during the actual bath. You know, if someone is unsafe to be um, alone at any time, you certainly do not want to leave the person alone in the bath or the shower, especially if they're also articulating or sh expressing that they feel um, some fear during this time. And communicating during each step. You know, you don't want to rush, and you can also build a routine in not just for the time of day and when you offer a shower or bath, but also the steps that you're using. It can help for the person to know what to expect during the actual bath time. Allowing the person to do as much as possible for him or herself can help the person feel more in control and increase independence. And it might be that you just need to use some cues to remind the person what to do. So using your words, or you might actually need to use gestures or demonstrate or leading by example. Gently guide, hand someone the washcloth, or you can show them uh, it's time to wash your face now. And asking simple questions. Would you like to you know, wash um, your legs first? Would you like to wash your face first? And hand them the washcloth so that they feel like they have choice. Some additional tips is to provide privacy, okay, and promote dignity as best as you can. Because as we talked about, this is an invasive experience and many people um, are might feel vulnerable as they're receiving assistance, even from a close family member. So allowing for a cover up while in the bath or shower could be with warm towels, sometimes throwing them in the dryer ahead of time can be real uh, comforting. And I also might suggest just Googling privacy garments for bathing because there are products out there. There are ponchos and there are other types of innovative um, garments that you can purchase just for this very purpose. And certainly just, again, you don't rush, be gentle. Your loved one or the person you're caring for skin might be very sensitive. You don't want to scrub. And of course you want to um, offer praise and um, talk about the accomplishments and how well somebody is doing because that just feels good. After the bath, you want to seat the person and you want to pat dry. Again, being gentle, gentle on the skin. And this is a real good opportunity now to check the skin for any problems, especially if the person is incontinent or doesn't room, move around a whole lot if they're typically in a wheelchair. It's a good time to just inspect the skin for uh, any rashes. Um, you can help apply lotion to keep the skin soft. And in areas or creases, uh, folds of the skin, you would, may want to use some, some powder. 
and help the person dress and comb their hair as needed and just tell the person how awesome he or she looks. That will make you both feel great. Okay, so hopefully um, these tips have been helpful for you. Again, just keeping in mind that you want to offer comfort. You don't want to rush. You want to be patient. Offer choice as best as you can and work in a routine based on the person you're caring for's preferences. So at Wellspring Solutions, um, we offer many services to older adults in Guilford County, but I want to highlight home care because we have staff that can assist your loved one at home with a bath. Um, if you have any questions about the services that we offer or our memory care center, uh, connections and memory club and education and support, please reach out to our navigator, Nicole, here at the number 545-5377. And you can also check out our website for upcoming video topics and our caregiver um, support and support group opportunities. And lastly, um, our caregiver support from Wellspring Solutions is funded through the Family Caregiver Support Program of the Older Americans Act. And it requires we give an opportunity for viewers to, to contribute to the cost of the programs. Please know any contribution is completely voluntary and it just greatly is appreciated. It expands the program to additional caregivers in the community any contributions, again, are voluntary and kept confidential. And here's the information on the screen on where you can direct those funds. So again, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us at Wellspring Solutions. And thank you so much again for watching.